Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about what I believe is the largest mental hurdle that players have when trying to build hydraulics. Um, I've watched a lot of players and on Twitch and what I have originally thought when I built my old tutorials was that people had trouble understanding um, how the hydraulics work, how they bend, um, how to resize them, um, how to think of how far they will move, etc. Um, what I've realized after watching people is that it's not the how you control the hydraulics, but more about actually how to keep bridges from moving and how they bend, etc. That it tends to be the greatest um, um, struggle. So um, if you would like to watch, um, I've got two other um, older hydraulics videos. I'll link them in the description. And they will. T they talk about um, essentially more about the controls, which in detail. Um, so what I'm going to talk about here first is essentially how every point that you have, uh, either you've got the yellow point I call them nodes, or the red points which are a node, but I call these anchors. Every rod can rotate on those points. So t typically they'll they'll tell you triangles are good. And what re and when you and what that usually helps with is it prevents these particular areas from rotating. Um, so what I've got here is here I've got a bunch of squares and here I've got a bunch of triangles, like with except the, for this portion. So this part here will stay sturdy before the bridge hits it or boat hits it, while the all the squares fall, and that's because every one of these points the rods can are free to rotate. If I have a single steel piece here, it will rotate and fall to the ground. If I have another piece coming out from that, that piece will rotate on that hinge. Um, this can be a little bit hidden if I put a piece up like this when using grid, then you may not know that it rotates or you may not think it does because it's just standing up perfectly on its end and until some force is applied to it, then you'll realize it'll fall. If I put a little piece like that, then you'll see it fall over right away. Um, so this particular issue is where, um, and this is important because with the with drawbridges, you have to think of, you have to understand which parts of your bridges are fixed, like this section, for an example, and which parts are are not fixed or allowed to swing. So if I build, well, let me just, um, if I build another set of triangles like this right here, and I don't put a piece here, then this whole particular section will rotate on this particular point. But the points within this section do not rotate amongst themselves. So it's, so what I've done here is I've, um, got a very basic drawbridge for this level um, and what I like to do is I like to break it up in um, different point, uh, sections. You've got your fixed sections on the ends. Um, you know what, I'm going to copy all this out. Oh, actually I'm going to do it above. Um, Okay, uh, my road doesn't let me. All right, so if I start with two end pieces here, oh, all right, whatever. Thanks. So these parts are fixed, fixed parts of the bridges. There's nothing on here that allows anything to move, and it's all just keeping part of the bridge up. So if I run this, the boat will run through eventually and then the van will go um, drive off the edge so these parts should be able to stand up for the most part without any of the rest of the bridge um, of course if you're actually building a real hydraulic bridge you may actually you will, will end up with additional support just by the structure that you have as part of your hydraulic so the next portion that you need to focus on is the parts of your bridge that can rotate. So this is my right portion and 
this here is my left portion, all right? So these are essentially like the flaps, the parts of, um, that I will allow to swing. So if I go like this, you can see that these swing. Uh, this one here breaks on the end because it, when it swings into the ground. But you can see the one on the right swings very clearly. And you can also see that the, uh, that these two roads stay straight relative to one another. If there is no connection here, then these will swing more like a rope. You see how this is bending in the middle? It is allowed to, when you, so most of the time when you want to build a, hall, a drawbridge, you want to find all the parts of your bridge that you want to move, and you want to make sure that they are fixed together with triangles and so forth. Um, when you do this, you've got your split joint here. This is where, of course, once it will split, we come to different sides. And then over here, this is the point where um, this whole deal here will rotate. All right. And then the last thing you have to do is you have to ha add the hydraulics. Um, another problem I see people when they are adding hydraulics is they feel that they have to, well, one, they have to attach it to the road, which you certainly don't have to. Um, the other is you feel like you're attaching it to only to points that already exist on the uh, bridge, like you have it right here. If I, if I can do that, it'll... It probably work, but it um, it looks like it did work. But you don't have to be restricted to that. You can build your hydraulic and attach it to the trusses. You can stretch it past the truss to if you need to get additional distance, or if you feel like this is going to give you more strength in your integrity of the bridge. In fact, I'm, I think I'm going to put this one down here. Uh, I'm going to have it stretch, and I'm going to build this other one off to the right. So. What I did before is I built this over here, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to build an additional fixed part of my bridge that's to hold these hydraulics, the other end of the hydraulics in place. So now, essentially, these parts here are part of my fixed right section of the bridge, but these parts, but these two wood pieces, their only purpose is to give me a good attachment point for my hydraulic here. And I could move this one as well if I want to put that further down. Um, and over here, I think I'm going to say, maybe I'm going to have a lot of trouble with the weight that is on this particular uh, piece and that holding it up like this won't help. So I might decide I'm going to try to hold that from the bottom. And this gives me a nice strong piece to help support this left side. Um, so I'll do that. And this is two different ways of lifting that one side and then it can, all, it can all come back down. Um, the other part that people have trouble doing is just visualizing how the split joints work. And um, even once you learn it, they look at all the numbers here, they still don't quite understand or can visualize what's going to happen. In this situation, everything on the left goes one way and everything goes in the right one way. Um, if you're building a standard drawbridge, then you think, okay, one side goes one way, one way side goes the other way, and there's not much more confusion to be had. Um, so I've got, on, in a different level, I've got a design that um, will help show a more complicated idea. All right, so this is a, this is a level where um, this first car has to go up to the top and then the van goes through the bottom. So what people tend to um, not understand most is how all the different sections of the bridge. And if, if you look at what I've got here, it's certainly not hard to understand why. And if I zoom in here, why would understanding why I did all this stuff doesn't make much sense either. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my uh, the moving part of my bridge and move it out so you can see this all right here is all my fixed portion and if you look in at the split joints all these were set to one because when I split these out this portion of the bridge that I've moved away is separate than this portion of the bridge here this is the part that I want to move and this is uh, below the uh, water line so I can't see that one piece there you go so uh, if I run this now then the car will go all the way across here and of course it, the car has to go to the top 
but this is one this whole portion of the bridge needs to be able to stand up by itself now if I if I didn't have any of the supports in here and I had it like this whoops let me uh, delete a little less than that so say I had something like this my first car well it's not gonna do it this time but I can make it work probably um, All right, so you can see this portion here may hold for my road, and uh, this other portion here didn't even hold the road up itself. So once it splits, you're going to have a much more trouble actually holding all the way to that or that van. So, um, so what I would do is I would move in. I, would, I built all this portion separate, and you, when I'm using the cup cut and paste, you can see it very clearly. And so you now you can see which portions of this bridge are the mobile portions of my bridge. And the parts of these bridges, the parts of my mobile portion that touches my split joint need to be a different number than the parts of that are my fixed bridge. And I've got this, this one and this one. This is part of my mobile. Yeah, so these two are two. And well, actually, actually, this one should be one, because um, this I've I built this even extra confusing. Uh, usually, people would not most. Usually, when people build this level, they have um, all the supports for this lower section on the bottom, and then they'll have the other supports on the top. So if I run it like this, you can see this will split like that, and then this road on the bottom is now strong enough for that van or st still strong enough for the van even once it doesn't rely on this portion to help hold it up. Now, let me, uh, going to build this slightly different here. Um, I'm gonna see if I can make this work. So this right here is going to be part of my fit part of the bridge and this is gonna be a lot more clear as far as um, going do a little land brace off the rock here trick. Um, whoop. There we go. I'll hold that up real tight. All right, so all these are going to be one, and then I'm going to build a road out the same kind of the same way I had before. And this time I'm going to put all these parts on the top. Now I have to connect all these portions together. And one thing I want to make sure I don't do is I don't want to connect them over here because this portion here is going to prevent this pivot and it's essentially in a lot of ways you're going to think of this as attaching this to the fixed portion of my bridge. If nothing could break at all then when this would when this split joint would would split then this bridge would be held in place right you can see it was held in place and it didn't swing and now the bus is going to try to go to the top. All right, so if you don't have a hydraulic there, then after the car goes, the mobile portion of your bridge should swing freely. Your hydraulic should essentially hold that piece in place. Um, and I don't have another good point to attach this, so um, I'm going to attach it to there. Well, I think that will be that will work. Now, attach this specifically to the split joint because I wanted to, to illustrate that the hydraulic here needs to be part of your mo part of the mobile portion of your bridge and I believe that would work there we go we're a little bit over budget but we should be able to tweak that with uh, by moving removing steel and stuff around here so I'm hoping this helps um, with your hydraulics um, and uh, I guess another point one thing to note is that if you're using a split joint on the anchor on a red point, then the, you, ha you have to use the value 2 to split from that anchor. If I use a value 1 here, then once this splits, it will still stay attached to the anchor. Like 1 is my, um, my non-mobile portion. I like to kind of continue that throughout my bridge, so I will have 
one here on my fixed portion of my bridge and two on my mobile portion essentially but these can be completely fl flipped around if I click every one of these and flop them one and twos then it will work the same when it's not an anchor well it should work the same when it's not an anchor um, I don't know why it is but I'm not gonna focus on it I think it's just breaking for some reason um, anyways I hope this helps and um, good luck on all your bridges <laughs>